Praise the Lord. Can we praise him one more time? Praise the Lord. It is a good thing to be in the house of the Lord. Praise God. The, song, the Bible said this is the day that the Lord has made. And we are here to rejoice and be glad in it. Praise God. I want to say good morning to everyone this morning. All the ministers and visitors. My brethren, my sisters and brothers. I greet you this morning. And I want to say greeting to our pastor and first lady in their absence. Praise God. And we are here this morning to lift up the name of Jesus. Praise God. The Bible says we should come with our heart filled with praise, with our mouth ready to worship because God is good. I limped in here this morning, but God is still good. And I'm going to worship him. I backed my car into something this morning. I damaged it, but God is still good. I'm not going to worry about it. Praise God. I'm just going to worship the Lord because he is good. Hallelujah. Praise God. He woke us up this morning in our right minds. And here we are. We walked here or we drove here. Nobody had to push us in. It is a blessing, isn't it? Hallelujah. Praise be to God. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. I would like you to just sing this refrain with me maybe two times. And then we're going to pray and ask God to bless our service this morning. He's here. We know that he's already here. Praise God. We are going to acknowledge his presence here this morning. Praise God. He is here. Hallelujah. He is here. Amen. He is here. Holy, holy. I will bless his name. And pray along with me this morning. Hallelujah. Praise God. Almighty God and our Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, Lord, we come before you this morning <clears throat> and we give you thanks and praise 
for your goodness and for your mercy. We thank you for your everlasting love. Praise God. You are the God of all grace. God of Abraham, God of Isaac. Hallelujah. We thank you, O oh God. You are the first and the last, the beginning and the end. And Lord, we come this morning to get a word from you. We come to lift you up and to praise you. You said if we lift you up, you will draw all men unto you. And so this morning, oh God, I pray that you touch each and every heart, touch our minds, touch our bodies, touch us, oh God, by your power this morning in the name of Jesus. Oh God, remember your people, oh God. Some this morning are wondering which way to turn. Some are grieving. Some are hurting. But nevertheless, oh God, we are here in your house to worship you this morning. Praise God. Our God is a good God. He's an awesome God. Praise be to God. Father God, I pray that you'll have your way this morning. Have your way this morning, oh God. In the mighty name of Jesus, touch each and every one this morning. Bless us, oh God, as we look to you this morning. Help us to look to you, my God, not to look to the right or to the left, but to look to you, to lift our eyes and turn it upon you this morning. In the name of Jesus, have your way, I pray, oh God. We commit the service in your hand. We commit everything in your hand, oh God, that will be done this morning. In the name of Jesus, have your way, I pray. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name. Let's continue to worship the Lord. God is a good God. Let's continue to worship the Lord. I just want to thank God for his presence this morning. Thank God for life this morning. Our feet touched the ground this morning. The ground is on our bridge. We are here this morning just to worship. Followed my feelings, I would be here. And when the devil pressed the feelings on me, I staggered around my table. I was drinking a cup of tea to feel better. And a voice just said, Just go out and worship. And my best story is, and I've always reflect back on that story with the woman with the issue of blood. Sometimes when you lose something for the Lord, from the Lord, you have to press. You have to get up, get up out of your comfort zone. Because I always tell myself, the devil challenge people who is afraid. And as long as you will trust the Lord and press, then the Lord will be there. Worship and adore the Lamb of God triumphant. One song, part of the song said, He purchased my transgressions. Righteousness is He. We're going to magnify the name of Jesus because He's worthy to say. Oh. 
Thank you, Jesus. It's all right to say you're worthy of it all. Above all things, you're worthy of it all. All the saints and angels bow before your throne and all the elders cast their crowns before the Lamb of God and sing, You're worthy of it all. You're worthy of it all. For from you are all.
Oh! 
trust in him this morning? Hallelujah. Will you trust in him this morning? Hallelujah. He is the only one that we can truly trust in and depend on this morning. Hallelujah. He is a trustworthy God. Hallelujah. When all our friends fail us, God is a trustworthy God. We can stand and believe that he is able to do all things that he has promised us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. How many of us have friends that has failed us? Hallelujah. But Jesus, hallelujah, he will never fail us. Hallelujah. He will never fail us. He will lead us in the right path. Hallelujah. He will never leave us, nor will he ever forsake us. He is a God that we can trust in. A God that we can hope in this morning. Hallelujah. And we want to thank him. We want to thank him this morning for being that faithful God. For being that faithful God this morning. For that we give him thanks and we give him honor. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. There's so many other things that we can trust in. But we trust in God this morning. We trust in the Almighty this morning. No one else. Hallelujah. But Jesus. Hallelujah. We thank Him. And we honor His presence among us this morning. We honor His presence with us this morning. Hallelujah. We honor the presence of God this morning. Because truly he's in the house. Hallelujah. Do you feel him this morning? Do you feel him this morning? His presence, hallelujah, is with us. Hallelujah. His presence is with us. Hallelujah. 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 We will continue to trust in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. No other hope. That we have but in Jesus hallelujah for this morning we have one visitor among us and that is sister Donnett Sinclair Danvers can you please stand so we can acknowledge you this morning hallelujah we bless you we bless you for coming this morning and this said you're a first time visitor you're new in the area um, it didn't say who invited you, but we thank you for coming. No one invited you, but the good Lord led you here this morning. And for that, we give him thanks. Hallelujah. For that, we give him glory for bringing you here this morning. Hallelujah. On behalf of our, uh, on behalf of our bishop who is not here this morning and for his, and sorry, and our first lady, we want to welcome you in the house of the Lord. On behalf of all the members here, we say welcome, welcome, come again. Come again and visit with us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The scripture tells us where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. There is liberty. There's freedom in the house this morning. So come, continue to come and feel free to come and worship God in the beauty of holiness because he inhabits the praises of his people. If there's anyone here that did not turn in a card and you're here visiting for the first time, for those that are watching us by the way of internet, we welcome you in the house of the Lord this morning. For the second time visitors, we also welcome you. Every member, you are welcome here in the house of the Lord this morning. You didn't have to come this morning, but you are here, each one of you. And we thank you all for coming out and worshiping God with us. Hallelujah. Four announcements we have here. We have... An invitation, actually, from the Pahokee Church. They will be having a prayer breakfast on March the 18th. We have tickets. Actually, we have five tickets. And they're going for just $20. $20. If you cannot make it, but you would like to send someone to that prayer breakfast, you can see Sister Marion Bailey, and she will sell you that $20 ticket. Only $20. All right? You can see Sister Marion Bailey after the service. Please remember our loved ones who are unable to worship with us. And from week to week, we hear their names. And I just pray that we continue to remember them in your prayers. And they are Minister Verona Rogers, 
Sister Carmina Turnbull, Sister Naomi Pickering, Sister Mildred Bagalou, Sister Shirley Williams, Sister Blanche Brivet, Sister Irma Cunningham, Sister Eileen Williams, Sister Geneve White, Sister Joyce Jones, and Sister DaCosta, Sister Khadija Campbell, and Sister Norma Anderson, Anderson's husband. Also, brothers Stephen Young, Minister Edwin Blake, Milton Norville, Brother Cooper, and Brother David Page, and also Brother Dunkley. Please, please do remember them in your prayers. Come show your talent. Anyone have a talent today? Anyone have a talent? A poem, a song, a dance? You're not too old to dance, ladies and gentlemen. So if you have a talent, please come out on March the 26th at 6 p.m. And, and the contribution is only, who remember that from last week? Five dollars. We're only asking you for five dollars. Amen. So please come out and minister with us each and every one, and that is, like I said, on March the 26th at 6 p.m. If you are interested in becoming a member of the choir, please see Sister Prudence Marshall, who's sitting in the second seat, second bench, second row, first bench, Sister Marshall, if you would like to join the choir. For the food ministry, please, please, they, they're, they're in need of volunteers and also DoorDash. See Sister Janet Ellis or Brother Gladstone Clark if you would like to DoorDash. And I, that is on Saturdays. Am I correct, Sister? Yes, on Saturdays. So if you are off from work and you would like to give up a couple of hours, please see any of those members. We have an invitation here. And I was hoping that I did not have to read the entire thing, but I scoped through it, but... <laughs> I have to read the entire thing. I'm so sorry, guys. And this is from the Central Light Grace Chapel. Th and also it's from the men's department. It says, it is with great enthusiasm that I, on behalf of our Bishop Maurice Clark and the Brothers for Brothers Ministry, write to you informing you of our planned events on March 2023. And extend to you, sorry, I'm sorry, guys, and extend to you and your, your men's department an official invitation to participate. Our Brothers for Brothers conference will take place on Friday, March 10th, and Sunday, March 12th, 2023, starting at 10 a.m. on Sunday and 7 p.m. both nights at 4760 North. State Road 7, Lauderdale Lakes. Also, we will be having a symposium at the same venue on March the 11th. Beginning at 10 a.m., we will be having three speakers re representing on the topics. Sorry, presenting on the topics. Maximizing your dollar, understanding how the immigration system works, and the other is your health matters. We would love to have you grace us with your presence for both events. However, we do understand your obligation to your congregation on Sundays, which is your primary day of worship. However, we do hope that you will be able to make it for the night sessions if possible. We are looking forward to having you present, sorry, have you present for the symposium on Saturday, March the 11th, starting at 10 a.m. I am available for whatever additional information you may need. I can be reached by telephone, and that is 954-995-8216. Best regards, Deacon Livingstone Ennis. I'm sorry, we have a note here, and it's stuck. Sister Pearl Lonely. Sister Pearl, are you here? 
They said Sister Pearl Lonely Cousin passed away in Trinidad on March the 2nd. Please keep that family in your prayers. We also have an announcement from Sister Lawrence. Can you come to the podium, please? Thank you. Before I go, I would like to leave an encouragement for you for the week. I do not, I do not at all understand the mystery of grace, only that it meets us where we are, but does not leave us where it found us. God bless you. Have a wonderful week in the Lord. Praise the Lord, everybody. It is not a different announcement. It's just to endorse or give a strong boost to the concert, which is a concert of talent sharing to be a blessing. All right? And it has it's all of us here in this church. We are not inviting anybody on the outside. It's for you and you and you and me. So I'm asking you, please, if you know that the Lord has blessed you with a talent, Please let us know what it is and indicate your willingness to come. Let us be a blessing amongst each other and give God the glory. Amen? Amen. So it's just to add that I'm asking you to come to see any one of us on the Pastor's Aid Committee. I'm going to ask the committee members to just raise your hands so that everybody knows who you are. We are Brother Chris. He's only putting up a finger. <laughs> Sister Primrose, Sister Annie, Sister Birdie, Sister Moise. Where's Sister Olive? She's not. Oh, Sister Olive is here. All right, so please let us know from today onwards. It will begin at 6 p.m. And remember now, it's just a small donation of $5. God bless you. And let us come out and make this a tremendous success. Praise the Lord. Can I count on you? I love you too. I haven't done this in such a long time that I totally forgot the birthday folks. How could I forget the birthday people? Oh my goodness. All right. So all the birthday people here, we have on March 5th with Janora Foster. We have March 8th, Jennifer Beckford. March 9th, Cassie Wa Casey Waite. And March the 10th, Bethan Da Costa and Pruden Sister Prudence Sterling. Sister Prudence Sterling. I know you're here today. And I don't think anyone else is here. But for the dates that you guys heard, please, please, if you have their numbers, please call them and wish them a happy birthday. Sometimes that's all that counts. Sometimes it's not the gifts. It's the fact that somebody called me and wished me a happy birthday. That's what matters. Uh, our weekly services are at the bottom of the bulletin, and it should be listed shortly. And that is on Sunday. We have our Sunday school, that's adult and children's Sunday school at 10 a.m. here at the sanctuary. We also have on Monday fasting. The meeting ID is in your bulletin. We have prayer Tuesdays and Thursdays at 9 p.m. A Bible study on Tuesdays at 7.30 p.m. We also have Bible reading program on Wednesdays at 7.30 p.m. Women's Fellowship, Wednesdays before the second Sunday at 7.30 p.m. Men's Fellowship, every fourth Thursday at 7 p.m. Youth Meeting is on Fridays at 7.30 p.m. And on Saturday mornings, we have prayer meeting. And all the information how to dial in is in your bulletin. And it's also listed for those that are watching on the way of internet on the website. Thank you and God bless you.
This is a, a time of excitement um, before the birthdays and the, um, the concert and so on. Uh, it's a time when we, yes, excellent. Um, it's a time when we, we, we give uh, towards the work of the Lord. And we are about to do so right now. I think two Sundays ago, uh, our sister Annie's um, reminded us that gi sacrificial giving uh, cost, and I agree with her. But I'm going to also say that it pays. Uh, oh, it pays. It costs. It pays. Uh, it, it's a, a mutually beneficial relationship between the giver and the receiver. If the giver receives something. The giver receives something. Everybody is satisfied in the end. In fact. The, the giver receives a whole lot more than the receiver. And we, none of us should, be to, should say now that we have nothing to give. It, it doesn't have to be money. It could be your talent. Um, some of you have some beautiful smiles, so just give it. You know? Yeah, just, yeah, okay, that's, here you go, take it. And um, you, we, whatever talents we have, let's, let's, let's give it. The, the, the ushers and... Everybody else. Uh, you know, I, I must be, let me just say something here about Brother Teddy here. Uh, Brother Ted comes to us whenever he comes in the area. He always comes right here to give us of his talent, playing to the glory of God. Uh, Brother Ted, we celebrate you, sir. In the same way we celebrate the other, the other players, we celebrate you for what you're doing for us. We celebrate all everybody. We celebrate the ushers. We celebrate those technicians. We celebrate those who are uh, in the choir and so on. You're doing a fine job. You're giving your best to the Lord. And this time now that we are going to give, in fact, the woman of Zarephath, she was benefited. The, um, the prophet Elijah was benefited from what was done. In fact, um, instead of just having something for a day, she had something that sustained her for the entire drought. So everybody is benefited when you give. And so we are going to give to the glory of the Lord. I just want to, I just want to remind you too that today is the first Sunday when we make a special effort to do something for a pastor. Um, you know, we have to be very careful uh, sometimes we don't know who we have until we miss the person. Uh, so let us do the best we can for our pastor. Um, today is the first Sunday. It's designated past pastoral Sunday in all our churches everywhere. And um, so we are going to give according to the word of God. God blesses us whenever we give. He blesses us abundantly. It doesn't have to be money. Sometimes I don't have money to give, but I give something else. I have talent. I have some some skills, so I offered it. I offered the skills that I have, and so everyone here has something to give. And those of you who have some um, dollars now to give, we're going to ask you to come forth and give the dollars. Those online who would like to get your blessing through giving. We ask you to do so. If you want to come here right now while we're here and give, please do so. Somebody will be at the door to receive if you can't be with us for the entire service. Otherwise, you could send your money through the post office. Or uh, let me use a, ver a verb, zeal. <laughs> Just zeal it. Oh, boy, what a, what a word. And, and um, we'll receive. God will bless you mightily. Uh, let us bow it. We are going to ask those who are collecting to come forward, and, um, and we're going to bow our heads and ask God's blessing on the offering that you'll be giving at this time. And just to remind you, if you don't have money, don't hesitate to come to church. Don't let money prevent you from coming to church. You will be a blessing at any rate. Everybody is a blessing when you come to church. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for this moment when we can come before you. We thank you for all that you have been doing for us. You've been so merciful to us. You provide for us at all times. 
you give us what, even that which we have not even asked because you know what we need. We pray, O oh God, that you will bless everyone today. Uh, those who ha are, give, are going to give their money, we pray that you will bless them. Those who have skills to give, we pray that you will bless them in a special way. And we pray, O oh God, that a blessing will be on that which will be given. Uh, that, that it will be to your bless it will be used wisely, used to the extension of your work. Take charge of us as we give, and allow us to give willingly. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. In the middle of the night, when my back's against the wall, I can't find a hope at all. My Jesus taught me how to pray. In the middle of the night, in the middle of the night, when my back's against the wall, I can't find a hope at all. My Jesus taught me how to pray.
trust it. As this prayer is made, then you will help me in doing so. Because it's not a single person's job. It's when we work together in unity, we pull down every stronghold from him. Can you bow your heads? Thou preparest a table before me. In the presence of my enemy. Thou nightest my head. Oil. My cup. Run it over. Surely, goodness and mercy follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Eternal God, and my Father, I thank you that you have always heard when your children cry to you. But on this occasion, I want to thank you for the impression which thou hast laid on my heart. And I believe that things do happen when your children ask and you give the go ahead. Now we are located on this property. And of course, the perimeter is very much there. But there are no protective fences. But you have been the protector. And that has not changed. This morning, it will be a celebration. My heart weeps within me. And my spirit is lifted up to the kingdom of God. I pray that you will send in position a cordon from the kingdom of God. And I pray that you will select a search team from the kingdom of God. which will intercept every unauthorized access. Father, I pray that you'll continue to control all access to this property. Hallelujah. And every thing that comes across that has not been authorized by you. Hallelujah. I present them to you. I'm asking you as the greatest Your words have declared that and that which we can never deny that all power is from you 
so we have found that time and time again this church property seemed to be used hallelujah by the unknown powers to men but you God you know everything praise God those who are coming on in unauthorized to do service to create havoc within the ministry this morning Lord of God in the name of Jesus Amen I believe that you have sent relief already and receive it through the power of the Holy Ghost Father, the midnight gathering, the early morning touches on the building. Wow. The powers, the idols which have been planted around this building within this premises. In the name of Jesus, I pronounce and declare that freedom from all these imperfections and malicious activities will be seized forthwith on the power of the living God will be made manifest Father I pronounce blessings on this property under your direction and that every hand every hand that is lifted up against you and every foot that walk upon this property unauthorized we condemn them in judgment oh hallelujah and I praise you, God, for bringing to light. Whoops! Father, in the name of Jesus, I commit to you this property. It will always be under curfew from the powers of God. And everything that is contrary to your will will be brought to subjection. As we will continue to serve you in spirit and in truth. Thou prepared as a table before me in the presence of my enemies the anointest our head with oil our cup running over surely 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 Thank you. 
dedication of this property to you. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. morning church this morning scripture reading is taken from 2nd Corinthians 8 11 to 21 now therefore perform the doing of it that there was a readiness to will so there may be a performance also out of that which ye have for if there be first a willing man, it is accepted according to that a man heart, and not according to that he art not. For I mean not that other men be eased and he burdened, but by any equality that now at this time the abundance may be a supply for their want, that their abundance also be a supply for your want and that there be equality as it is written he that had gathered much and nothing over and he that had gathered liquor had no lack but thanks be to God which put the same earnest care into the heart of Titus for you for indeed he accepted the exhortation, but being more forward of his own accord, he went unto you. And we have sent with him the brother whose praises in the gospel to hold all the churches. And now that only, but he has also chosen of the churches to travel with us with this grace, which is administered by us to the glory of the same Lord and declaration of your ready mind. Accord, avoiding this, that no man should blame us in this abundance which is administered by us. 21st and last. Providing for most things, not only in the sight of the Lord, but also in the sight of men. Thanks be to God. This is the word of the Lord. I love you, Lord, for your mercies never fail me. 
All my days I've been here in your hands From the moment that I wake up Until I lay my head I will sing of the goodness of God
All my life, you have been faithful. We thank you, Lord, for your faithfulness. Thank you for your love. We thank you for your kindness towards us. We thank you, Jesus. Father, we thank you for the word that you have provided for us today. God, we sometimes you know, put ourselves in the, in, in the forefront, but God, we ask that you be preeminent this morning, this afternoon, rather. We pray, God, that your word will go forth, God, nothing about myself, but all about you and your word. Let your people be blessed. In Jesus' name, amen. This month, we are focusing on the theme, the sound of abundance of rain. And when we hear the theme, abundance of rain, I believe that most of us automatically assume that a speaker or the presenter is going to be telling us that if we live right or do certain things, we will receive abundant blessings. Although that is true in some instances, it is not, this is not that kind of a message. I would like for you to follow me and allow me to approach the topic of abundance from a different perspective this afternoon. When I think of abundance, I think of overflow. I think of more than enough. I think of plenty. As a matter of fact, the Oxford Dictionary defines abundance as a very large quantity of something. As human beings, we tend to like large quantities of good things, such as money, gifts, love, and so on. When we start talking about abundant trials, abundant tribulations, abundant temptations, we tend to shy away from those because those are things that are uncomfortable and make us feel uncomfortable. And so when we, I go through this negative abundance, I'm receiving lessons in endurance. We forget to realize that when we go through trials and tribulations and temptations, we're going through um, we're receiving lessons in how to endure, how to persevere, how to preserve, and also to walk in our purpose. We have a tendency to crave the positives and avoid the negatives as such as, as much as humanly possible. So I'd like to share this, this, this short story with you. One day, a father of a very wealthy family took his son on a trip to the country with a firm purpose of showing his son how poor people live. They spent a couple of days and nights on the farm of what would be considered a very poor family. On their return from their trip, the father asked his son, how was the trip? It was great, dad. Did you see how poor people live? The father asked. Oh, yeah, said the son. So tell me, what did you learn from the trip? Asked the father. The son answered, I saw that we have one dog and they have four. We have a pool that reaches to the middle of our garden and they have a creek that has no end. We have imported lanterns in our garden and they have the stars at night. Our patio reaches to the front yard and they have a whole horizon. We have a small piece of land to live on and they have fields that go beyond our sight. We have servants who serve us but they serve others. We buy our food and, grow, and they grow theirs. We have walls around our property to protect us. They have friends to protect them. The boy's father was speechless. Then his son added, Thanks, Dad, for showing me how poor we are. In this story, the dad thought that he was getting ready to teach his son a valuable lesson. But little did he know that the son would be the one teaching him even greater and more realistic lesson that the dad was too blind to see. The dictionary clearly defines the word abundance as a noun, which is the name of a place, person, or thing. And I fail to tell you that my subtopic today is I am the abundance. So... Our approach to abundance will be greatly influenced by our mindset and will determine our outcome. Here are the major difference. When we see abundance as an action word, we're ultimately looking for something to be handed to us as a reward. When we view abundance as a noun, we see it as a person or a thing that we have direct access to 
or that dwells within us. So examine yourself today and see which one you can relate to. Abundance as a verb, something being given to you, or abundance as a noun, a person or a thing that you have direct access to. So let us, let us, let us take a look at Exodus chapter 3. And in Exodus chapter 3, we see the story of the angel of the Lord speaking to Moses on Mount Horeb. The angel appeared to him in a flame of fire in the midst of a bush, but the bush was not consumed with fire. So, like anything else, Moses, like any one of us, Moses immediately wanted to investigate to see why the bush was not burning. But the Lord intervened and told him to not approach the bush, but to take off his shoes because where he was standing was holy ground. So sometimes God has to stop us to give us gentle reminders. He sometimes has to remind us who we are and whose we are. He sometimes must remind us that we represent him. And as such, there are some expectations that must be met. You see, when Christ called us, when we gave our lives to Christ, there were some basic expectations that were set out, and those expectations must be met. So God reminded Moses that he was God of his father Amram, God of Abraham, God of Isaac, God of Jacob. See, it is sometimes necessary when we get ahead of ourselves and we forget that we are the, his workmanship. We sometimes forget that we are his body, that this is his body, that this is his handiwork, that he has to sometimes gently nudge us and say, look here, look here, little boy, look here, Chris. I placed you on this earth. You are here for my purpose. So don't get ahead of yourself because I am still your God. So God told Moses, that he heard the cry of Israel and that he should, he Moses, should go tell Pharaoh to release the Israelites so that he, Moses, could usher them out of Egypt. And I know, I'm sure you all know the story if you ever, you know, grew up in Sunday school. So Moses, at the time, not recognizing that he was speaking with the abundance, he said, who am I to give this mighty king, Mark, you're a human being, a directive and who should I say sent me? You see, sometimes we get afraid of human authority figure. We sometimes get afraid of the bosses and the leaders of our nations and our countries because we hold them in such high esteem. I'm going to tell you a little, bit, a little bit about this man who is the abundance. So in verse 14, God said, so after Moses went and said, well, who am I? Poor Moses, this little boy, to go tell King Pharaoh that you, you know, you told me to let your people go. So in verse 14, God said, I am that I am. And he said, thus shalt thou say unto the children of Israel, I am had sent me unto you. You see, sometimes we seem to forget the power and the nature of the God that we serve. See, when we go through difficult times, when we go through trials and heartaches, we sometimes forget that the God that we serve is the I am that I am. You see, when I say I am Christopher Gentles, I say it with confidence because I know that I am Christopher Gentles. So when we talk about our God, we need to talk about him with confidence because he is the I am that I am. So we do not serve a timid or a limited or an incompetent God. We serve an all-powerful God and must put all our confidence in this all-powerful God. We serve, the God that we serve is the embodiment of power. He is the embodiment of wisdom. He is the embodiment of strength and the embodiment of might. You see, if you recognize him as such, why would we doubt or question his ability to protect and provide for us? You see, sometimes we, we doubt that he will protect us and provide us and take us out of the horrible pit that we sometimes find ourselves in. You see, we sometimes forget when things are going good, we tend to forget 
the person who calls these things to be going good. But when things start going downhill and start getting bad, that's when we want to run back to God and ask him for his assistance. And nothing is wrong with asking him for assistance. But we need to remember God in the good times as well as in the bad times. So the songwriter W.C. Martin wonderful declared this in his hymn. I trust in God wherever I may be, upon the land or on the rolling sea. For come what may from day to day, my heavenly Father watches over me. He said, I trust in God. I know he cares for me. On mountain bleak or on the stormy sea, though billows roll, he keeps my soul. My heavenly father watches over me. So today I want to remind us that the abundance doesn't just come to us as a reward, but should always be in us. Let me tell you what I mean by that. Remember I said the verb, the action word, we're looking for a reward. See, when we hear the theme, I hear the sound of abundance of rain. We always hear the message preached. You know, when we do this, we do that. Then God is going to send some, some blessings and he's going to pour out a blessing on our life. But I'd like to add to us uh, that we wouldn't have to worry if the abundance is residing inside of us. Uh, because if he's abiding inside of us, uh, then we can rejoice night and day. And we don't have to worry. So we are speaking about this God who lives inside of us. There is absolutely nothing that this abundance will not do for his people to ensure that they are protected. See, when I have the I am within me, I will exude a great level of confidence on my journey because I will be a living testimony of the scripture that says, greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. You see, we have to examine ourselves because we can be regular church attenders. We can be choir members and choir leaders. We can be youth directors. We can be pastors and deacons and bishops. And still the abundant Christ does not live within us. You ask me, Brother Chris, but how dare you say that? Because many of us and some of us, uh, we're good at putting some words together and make it sound right and sound good. And many of us, we read the scriptures and we can regurgitate the scriptures. But if you see us behind closed doors, our lives do not reflect what the word of God is saying to us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So we need not just to want their abundance. We need to want the abundance to live in us night and day. The song is coming to me. I'm rejoicing night and day as I walk this narrow way for the hand of God in all my life. I see. Hallelujah. So you do not have to belittle yourself and turn to witchcraft for protection because the one who sits high and looks low will always provide a way of escape it's sad to say that there are some christians there are some church of god christians there are some pentecostal christians that will look to the witchcraft to mother this and father this for their help but my bible tells me my help cometh from the lord hallelujah who made heaven and earth. 1 Corinthians 10 verse 13 says, There hath no temptation taken you, but such as is common to man. But God is faithful, who will suffer you to be tempted, not suffer you to be tempted above all that you are able, but will with the temptation also make a way of escape that you might be able to bear it. Can I tell someone today that any temptation, any trial, any persecution that you are going through right now, God sees and he hears and he knows it and he has prepared a way of escape for you. 
because he's not going to give you more than you can bear. So when you go through your trials and your tribulations, don't, don't, don't ask God why. Tell him, thank you, Lord. Someone talk about you, thank you, Lord. Someone persecute you, thank you, Lord. Someone lay their hand on you. And I know it's hard in these times. Uh, every time you go to social media, there's a fight in a store. There is a fight on the street. Uh, you can't even get into a school. There is a fight. Uh, but someone put their hand on you. Thank you, Lord. Not many persons says amen to that one. Because we want to hit back. But I tell you something. You see... The blow that I might give you may not be as powerful, definitely won't be as powerful as the blow that my God, the abundant God that lives and reigns within me can give you. So don't you persecute me. Don't you try me. Don't you test me. I have a God who defends me. So what are the benefits of having the abundance with you? I'm going to talk about five benefits and then I'm going to wrap it up in a decent time. First one, the abundance brings acceptance. We accept that God is the only sovereign God and that there is none other that can be compared to him. I hope you all accept that this morning. Our Psalm 89 verse 8 says, O Lord God of hosts, who is strong, Lord like unto thee, or to thy faithfulness round about thee. This acceptance is a declaration that I am sold out to Christ. And I only recognize him as the one true living God and as head of my life. You see, when you accept Christ, you have to close the entrance of your heart. Because the adversary does not believe in losing any of his followers you see you can't come to christ and still have the rudiments of sin that you are indulging in and still be meddling with them when you open the door for the spirit of christ to come in you need to close it after the spirit comes in so that he can take up residence and do what he needs to do because when you open the door and you leave it open and the spirit comes in and darkness walks in God does not coexist with darkness because he is light and wherever darkness is he does not he does not live or set up shop so we need to close the door that the adversary cannot have any foot in our lives look back into your life every time you're walking in the spirit and living a fully committed life for Christ the devil unleash his angels to taunt and terrorize you. Anybody can relate to that? Yeah. I'm going to share a testimony with you real quick. About two, three months ago, I was at the height of my spiritual level. I mean, I was, I was here. You couldn't touch me, say nothing to me. And, you know, when you're there, the devil said, Oh, no, no, he's not lukewarm. I, I got I to gotta do something. And so he started distracting, distracting, distracting. And I fell for it. You see this little thing called your telephone? Yeah, the telephone can be a big distraction. All right? I turn the television off, but the phone is right beside me. And I sleep with it right beside me, right? It became a distraction. And as I was preparing for this message, I had to come to grips that I allowed the adversary to distract me, but I had to tell him that in the name of Jesus, you have no authority over me or over this body. Because this body is a living temple of the Lord. So sometimes we get distracted. And I know the older folks in here never get distracted. I know you're so holy and so saved that you never get distracted. Nothing ever comes to tempt you. So just us that are not so older or not so mature, we go through that, all right? But I want to let you know that you see Brother Chris. Brother Chris is not the perfect being because that would be a big liar if I say that. I have the same trials and tribulations that you have. Anything that you've gone through, I go through it too. 
anything that you're going through, I might have gone through it. But one thing I'm going to tell you that I may have over you, I'm a praising guy. I'm going to praise my way out of any situation. So this morning when I stood here and I saw you barely struggling to praise the Lord, I had to close my eyes and give up a praise to the Lord because God has been so good to me. I don't need a praise team to tell me how to praise God. I know that I can lift up my hands and say, For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory. Brother, I'm telling you, we're in times, if you don't know how to praise your way out of situations, you are going to be left behind. Amen. Let me try and rush through this. The psalmist asks the question, who is a strong Lord like unto thee? He is saying that his God is incomparable to any other God. Notice he said, O oh Lord God of hosts, not of hosts, plural, of hosts, our God is the God of gods. He is superior to all other gods, as well as more powerful than any other god. We sing the chorus, if you're standing on the solid rock, and you know the power that you've got, Satan, you cannot prevail. I believe sometimes Satan prevail because we don't know the power that is in us. We don't know the power of the abundant God that is living and reigning in us. And then sometimes the abundant God is not in us. So even Satan is aware of the significant power of God. And so he tries to do everything to distract you from achieving your destiny and walking in your purpose. But I come to tell you this morning, never underestimate the devil. Because he is always scheming and planning against you and I. Can I say it again? The devil is always scheming and planning something for us. He never leaves us. Just like my God never leaves me, the devil is always. The difference is that God is right beside me. God is in me. The devil has to stand on the sideline. And unless I go closer to where he is, he will have no part with me, with, with, with what I'm doing. Because if I stay on the Lord's side, where the Lord protects me, where the Lord shields me, where he carries me, where he covers me, the devil can do me no harm. All right. Second, the abundance brings awareness and authority. An awareness of who God is and who you are in him. Galatians 2 verse 20 says, I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. Yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. So when you are aware of who God is, and who you need, you do not need to be forced to worship. You do not need to be forced to praise. You do not need to be forced to read the word. You do not need to be forced to pray or forced to give. As a matter of fact, when you have this awareness that you have authority to tread upon the lion and adder, you will, come, you will make some bold moves and declaration even when all the odds are stacked up against you. Have you ever had your back against the wall where it seems like there is nowhere to go? You are so back up against the wall and you don't know how your enemies just walked away and left you? Because the last time you looked, they were right there in front of you. If you go forward, you're walking into them. If you try to go backward, you're going to have to walk through the wall. And you're saying, well, I don't know what am I going to do next, right? I am saying, well, if I make a move to the right, because they have surrounded me, and the wall is behind me. So imagine they form a semicircle around you, and the wall is right here. If I try to go forward, they're going to get me. But I tell you something. There is something in prayer and praise. There is something in knowing the word of God. I heard the Sunday school teacher said this morning that we have to read the word. You see, when I study the word for a message, I am preparing myself for that particular message. As Christians, when we read the word night and day and meditate on it, it doesn't matter what situations we find ourselves in 
or where we find ourselves, there is going to be a word that will get us out of that situation, out of that position. You may not have the time to call your bishop or your, your, your choir director or your women's ministry director or your music director. You may not have time to call anybody, but when you call on Jesus, when you apply the word to your situation, when you tell the situation what the word of God says, remember, when the devil came to tempt Jesus, Jesus said, it is written. He didn't say, I sub no, he had the authority to say, you know, anything he wanted to say. But he had to remind him, it was an example for us. We need to study the word. So we need to know that we have power and authority. I have the assurance that when you see me with the temporal eyes, you are seeing flesh and blood. But there is more to me than that. When you see me with the spiritual realm, you should see a warrior, a weapon of mass destruction, a source of power by virtue of Christ living within me. So the human being sees flesh and blood. But they don't see the blood, they see the flesh, right? They see the flesh. But when you see me in the spirit, you should see a powerful man of God. A man that is not afraid to speak what thus saith the Lord and do what the Lord commands him to do. Third, the abundance does not entertain ambivalence. And that word ambivalence means having mixed feelings towards someone or something. You see, the abundance allows you to declare what you stand for without wavering or without reservation. Many times we compromise our faith and beliefs because they conflict with the popular societal norms and trends. Even today we see a lot of churches are watering down the gospel to get more members to come in. But shouldn't they be speaking what thus saith the Lord and let the word of God draw them in? Listen, we're not going to try to put a bait to get anybody. We just need to speak the word and show them what Christ says and the Lord will do the drawing. Got to know the word to speak it though. So no ambivalence, not wavering. The third, or the number four, the abundance brings the anointing. To be anointed is to be consecrated or made sacred. It means to be dedicated to God. Let us be careful not to confuse anointing with talent or popularity. A person can be ta a talented singer but have no anointing. One can be an eloquent speaker but lack the anointing. But what does consecration mean? Consecration is the act of dedicating yourself to the service of God and the worship of God. It means to make holy or to dedicate to a higher purpose. You see, serving God is not merely coming to church on Sunday through Saturday. A dedicated service and worship of God is a selfless commitment to every thought, every action, every decision, and every word me must be about God and his work. That is dedication. That is consecration. So Fannie Mae Crosby wrote this verse in her hymn. Consecrate me now to thy service, Lord, by the power of grace divine. Let my soul look up with a steadfast hope and my will be lost in thine. It is obvious that we are living in end times. And so we, don't, we need less acting and more authentic Christians. You all didn't hear that, right? Less acting, leave the acting for Hollywood, and more authentic Christians. See, too many actors and pretenders are on the scene. It is time for the children of God to take up their position of dominance and authority and let the world know that they need Jesus now more than ever. See, brethren, you see all that's happening. You see wars and rumors of wars. You see, I, I just read it in Hawaii, which I never knew it snowed in Hawaii. The mountains of the island are covered with snow. A heavy snowstorm, which is unusual at this time of the year. Things are happening around us. And as Christians, we are so blinded. We have not seen that the Bible says these things would happen and they would signal the end times. But the Bible says when you see these things, 
Look up. Too many actors. Jesus, now more than ever, we are sailing through stormy weather. All God's children should get together, for we need Jesus now more than ever. Yes, brethren, we need him now more than ever. The authentic Christian does not easily get offended. He does not take everything personal. He does not indulge in sinful activities, but he shares the word of God and prays without ceasing. That's what the, the authentic Christian does. I could say a lot on that. But we need some more authentic Christians in the house. I'm not bashing anybody. I, when I say the house, I mean the house of the Lord. God's kingdom. We need more authentic Christians. People who don't just show me one side, but have another side to them. Let me move on. The fifth and final, the abundance is a call to action. There is a desperate need for some action-oriented Christians. You see, COVID seems to have crushed and dampened and demolished some of, our, some of us spiritually. We may not have the means or strength to go to Africa or to the Caribbean to evangelize, but we can do it in our homes, in our neighborhoods, and sometimes even in our churches and our workplaces. We can pray without ceasing. We can worship like we've never worshipped before. We can share the word with someone. The call to action is so evident in these times because of the state that the world is in. You see, brethren, the world is in a real difficult state. The world is in a state where anything goes. Oh my God. If I see one more guy wearing a purse, I'm going to scream. Now... It's gone to, to, to another extreme, right? If I see one more fight break out in a, in a store, I'm going to scream. Mm. We've gone so far left. It's going to be hard to pull us back right. But listen, if God's people bond together, if God's people unite together, if God's people come together, if God's people pray together, if God's people decide to take action against what is happening in the world, we can start pulling from the left and take them to the right because we need some people to come into the house of the Lord. I was looking at the game of chess and as I close, it is likely when we look at the game of chess, it is like playing um, chess, sorry. Checkmate is when the king is cornered and cannot move in chess. The king is cornered and cannot move. We have to get in the habit of cornering the king of darkness and boldly declare checkmate. Let me, let, let me close with that. When you play chess and the king is in the corner and cannot go forward, backward, diagonally, or sideways. Sideways. My English is bad today. He is in a corner. So if you play chess... That's where you say checkmate, all right? So I'm, I'm thinking, if I corner the devil, you see, we need to be more on the offensive and not on the defensive. Because what happens is that when we try to be on the defensive or to be reactive, sometimes the devil catches us at our weakest point. But if I am on the offensive all the time, if I am on the offensive, on the attack of the devil, and I corner him, I can say, checkmate, devil, you ain't going nowhere. I got you cornered. I'm leaving someone outside to hear the word of God. Hallelujah. So we need as children of God to ensure that we know who the abundant God is. The God who says, I am that I am. He is the abundant God. Stand with me, everybody, everywhere. When you know the abundant God, you know what to do and how to act. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let us seek to know the abundant God today. Let him do what he needs to do in us. And I thank God for the lighthouse. I owe my life to him. King Jesus is the light.
If it wasn't for the lighthouse, tell me where would this ship be? Imagine a ship on the sea, the dark seas, and there is nothing to direct them. Minister Watson is coming to pray this closing prayer for us. Thank God for the lighthouse. I Father, we look to you and we thank you. We look to you on our faces. We were not ashamed. Lord, when we trust you, God, you will always come through for us. And so in the name of Jesus, even at this moment, if there is someone, oh God, that was even shy to come for prayer, may you touch their hearts, oh God, in the name of Jesus. And if they went home, oh God, on the conviction, Lord, may you continue to work, oh God, on that individual. We thank you, God. Breathe on us, everyone, we pray thee. Lord, we need you now more than ever before. And so, God, we thank you. We thank you, God, for life. You gave us life that we can be here today to praise you. And so, Lord, as we go, 
we ask that you will help us to keep our minds stayed on you lord because we are in the last and closing days and we know that the enemy tries to distract us very much but we ask in the name of jesus that you would help us to keep our focus on you and lord may you anoint those that will be coming back tonight oh god may you turn your glory on in our souls and lord help us to bring someone with us in the name of jesus May you cover us, Lord, as we go. Breathe on everyone, I pray thee. And we tell you thanks for journeying mercies in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise the Lord. You've been standing. We're going to be closing. I'd like for us just to remember Deacon Dunkley in our prayer. As I stood here, he came to my mind. I just want us to just breathe a quick word of prayer for Deacon Dunkley, wherever he is. Not sure if you know he, he was in the hospital. He needs some rehabilitation and so we want to pray that God will touch him so that he can avoid rehabilitation that he can be rehabilitated by the great physician let us pray for Deacon Doug right now father in the name of Jesus we thank you for your son we pray God wherever he is right now that you'll touch him touch his body every limb every part of his body we pray that your anointing will be upon him that hospital room that bed that he's laying on Jesus. We pray, God, that it will be so consecrated that he shall feel the power of the anointing and the transforming power of Jesus emanating through his body even now. Touch him from the crown of his head onto the sole of his feet, God. We pray for, the, for divine healing. God, we pray for divine healing to touch his body. Come nigh his body. Come nigh his family right now. In the name of Jesus, God, we are asking you for that supernatural touch. We believe that you are still the healing God. And we know, God, that you will do whatever is in your will. We thank you, Jesus, and we praise you. Hallelujah. And now may the saving grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, love of God the Father, the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, rest, remain, and abide with us all, both now and forever. Amen. See you tonight at 7.